Okay, in this video, we are going to continue and finally finish doing a ton of series multiple choice questions. This is part eight, the final part, um, and all the previous parts are probably linked below and maybe above in a playlist or perhaps at the side. Who knows? All right, let's do it. So first question, what is the sum of the series from one to infinity negative, the quantity negative two to the n over e to the n plus one? This is geometric. I'm going to rewrite it the way I like to rewrite geometric. So what I'd like to do is take everything to the end, group it together so that I can just look at it and see what the ratio is. So here I can see the ratio is negative two over E. E is bigger than two, so the ratio is, the absolute value of the ratio is less than one. This converges. Um, it was an option for it to not to converge, so we had to think about that. But the sum will be the first term, so we're gonna plug in one, that bottom number. So you really have to pay attention to that when you're doing it. It's the first term, whatever. If it started at n equals 10, we would plug in 10. Um, but in this case, it starts at 1, so we get negative 2 over e squared over 1 minus the ratio. And then we have to do some algebra, so I'm just going to do that and do that. And here we go. We get negative 2 over e times e plus 2, which is negative 2 over e squared plus 2e, which is b. All right, next problem. Um, consider the series, the sum from 1 to infinity of a sub n. Uh, if a sub 1 is 16 and a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is equal to 1 half, so the ratio of consecutive terms is 1 half for all integers n greater than or equal to 1, then what is the sum of the series um, from 1 to infinity? So this is a really good, interesting question. Um, so I am going to uh, look at this. So that's the ratio of terms. And uh, the first term is 16. So I'm going to write a series for it. I'm going to say that uh, we have from 1 to infinity, the first term is 16. And then we need to uh, raise that. So our ratio of consecutive terms is 1 half. So 1 half to the n minus 1. So when I plug in 1, I get 16, the first term. And then every successive term will just be 1 half of the previous one. That's our geometric sequence series, rather. Um, so now we need to find the sum. So it's going to be, um, so this is, I'm just checking to make sure I did it right. Like, it's never wrong to check and make sure that what you wrote for your nth term generates the terms. Like, this does follow. Um, so it's going to be first term, which is 16 over 1 minus the ratio, uh, which is 16 divided by 1 half, which is 32. So that is our answer. All right. 66. Consider the geometric series from uh, 1 to infinity of a sub n, where a sub n is greater than 0 for all n. Um, what do we want to do? Uh, the first term of the series, a1, is 48. And the third term, a3, is 12, which of the following statements is true. OK, so we got to like work out what's happening. So we know the first and the third term. So I think this is a good idea. You don't have to do it this way, but I like wrote out A1, 2, and 3. And then I'm filling in the blanks just so I know what's going on. And also, because of the way I made the video, I'm like in the middle of geometric, so like I have a better idea of how to do this. If it's the middle of the AP exam, this strategy is way better because, you know, you're you're like solving it rather than just being like, oh, I just did this problem. Although if you study enough, you'll think you did every problem. That'll be good. So the ratio of consecutive terms should be the same, which means if I do a2 divided by 48, it should be the same as 12 divided by A2. That's how geometric sequences work. And geometric series are just the sums of geometric sequences. So this has to be true. And there's some math we can do here. So A2 squared is going to be, I'm writing 48 as 12 times 4 because it's a little easier. So I get 12 times 12 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. So it's really 24 times 24. So A squared, A2 squared rather, is 24 squared. Now, this is important because that means that a sub 2 could be plus or minus 24. We don't actually know. Um, and because of that, what we're thinking is if I do a2 divided by 48, I'm getting plus or minus 24 divided by 48. I'm getting plus or minus 1 half. So I don't actually, I know that the absolute value of the ratio is less than 1. The series definitely converges. What I don't know is I don't know what it converges to. Because if I use positive 1 half, um, I will get that the sum is first term over 1 minus the ratio. So 48 over 1 half, so 96. 
if I use negative one half, I get 48 over one minus negative one half. So 48 over three halves, which is 96 divided by three, which is 32, which suspiciously is not actually the answer to A. So I'm not really sure where A's value of 64 is coming from. Maybe somebody knows and can let me know. Um, but either way, you could get two possible sums. So definitely converges, but we do not know what it converges to. So that's the answer. The answer is C. All right, new problem. 67. What is the sum of the series? So they're like giving you a bunch of terms, which is nice, but then they give you the nth term. So it's uh, the sum negative one to the n plus one over pi, no, times pi over e to the n. So pi is not being raised to the nth power. It is not a part of the ratio. So the ratio itself is actually negative one over e, right? That's what's being raised to the nth power. So what we need to do is do the first term, which conveniently they gave to us. We don't need to like work out what value of n generated that. It's like first term is pi over e. First term over one minus the ratio. Um, and then we have to do, you know, some, I don't know, arithmetic, I guess. This, this arithmetic feels more like algebra, but it's still arithmetic. Um, so we end up with uh, just pi over e plus one, and that is an answer choice. So I'm gonna pick it. All right, next question. To what number does the series, this is another infinite geometric, geometric is the best. It's really not. P series are the best because they're, you just look at them and you're like converges, diverges, converges, diverges. With a geometric, you can look at it and be like converges, diverges, but you also sometimes have to find the sum. So here we're doing the sum negative e over pi raised to the k. Uh, e is less than pi, so the absolute value of r is less than one, so it does converge. Um, so we're just going to do first term. So starting at k equals zero, the first term generated is one over one minus the ratio. And then again, some, I don't know, algebraic arithmetic. I get pi over pi plus e, which is c. All right, new problem. We're closing in on it. I only did 71 problems. I should have done 72 and make it nine per, but whatever. Um, another infinite geometric. So the sum from one to infinity negative three to the n plus one over five to the n. So uh, first term over one minus. Uh, the ratio again here, I'm gonna rewrite this, pull everything that's to the n under one thing. Um, so I'm gonna end up with, we're going from, uh, so negative three, and then I'll have negative three fifths to the n. Same thing written differently, but I can easily identify now the ratio, which is kind of the most important part. So I'm gonna plug in one to get the first term because one is the lower bound there. That'll give me uh, nine over five, one minus negative three fifths. And then again, we just have to simplify this. So nine fifths over, uh, I mean, eight fifths. So we're gonna get nine eighths as our answer. Nice, let's do this. The sum of the, it's like ending with all these geometric series and it's great because they're so straightforward. Uh, the sum of the infinite geometric series, three halves plus nine sixteenths plus 27 over 128 plus 81 over uh, 1024. So I need to figure out R because, uh, I mean, I guess it, like to get from the first term to the second term, you just multiply the top by three and the bottom by eight. And then to confirm that that works, do that to go from nine to 27, multiply by three, to go from 16 to 128, multiply by eight. So three eighths is R. If you're not sure what I just did, divide consecutive terms. So 9 sixteenths divided by 3 halves should give me r. You can do that with any consecutive terms. Um, so that gives me this. So it is the case that r is 3 eighths. So now I just need to do, and the absolute value of r is less than 1, so it converges. Although not converging is not an option, so you know it had to. All right, so our sum is going to be the first term, which was 3 halves, over 1 minus the ratio, which is 3 eighths. So this again, you end up simplifying this a ton. So my, I emphasize in these, I'm not doing a lot of like Taylor series or Maclaurin series. I have other videos where I do that stuff. This is all just like series of constants. This is on the exam, like it will show up. It's gonna be a bunch of multiple choice questions. Sometimes it kind of invades the free response questions. So you do need to know all of this, but it does have like a slightly uh, different, I don't know, like flavor from some of the other problems that you've probably done. So 24 over 10, 2.4. Also, I don't know why these are decimals. I don't think this would be a calculator question, but whatever. All right, the final question. This has been an ordeal. Well, a journey, 
It's been a journey for you. It's been an ordeal for me. I had a lot of false starts with this video. Um, what is the value of the sum from zero to infinity, negative two thirds to the n, ending on a really nice question. All right, so first term over one minus the ratio. Uh, first term is when you plug in zero, which gives us one over one minus the ratio, which is plus two thirds because minus negative two thirds. So that's gonna be one over five thirds or three fifths. And that's it, 71 practice multiple choice series questions. If you can do all these, you're in pretty good shape for series. You do wanna go back and make sure you're on top of all the Taylor series and McLaurin series and polynomial stuff, because that's another part of it. It's like series is really two part. You got series of constants, which is all your series tests, which is mostly what we're doing here. And then you got your Taylor and McLaurin stuff um, that's kind of separate. But anyway, that's a lot of problems. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.